Welcome in everybody and welcome to 2017. A happy new year to everybody. I'm recording this video on Monday, January the 2nd, 2017. So happy new year all. This is Charlie Castro. want to thank you for being with me uh, wherever you may be today. Um, just we have a short 20 minute video today we're going to share with you. Um, what to expect in early 27, uh, 2017, what we see happening at least. Um, and there's some changes coming. There's some changes coming in both um, with regards to bank-owned property as well as to private IPOs. Um, so about today's video, again, if you have a pen and paper, it wouldn't be a bad idea to be prepared to uh, jot down a few notes. Um, this, again, is a short 20-minute video covering some changes we see coming on both bank owned as well as private REOs. This, this, I would consider this to be a must watch if you're on our buyers list. If you're not on our buyers list, contact us. Be glad to get you on there. But if you've been buying off our either bank owned and or private REO list for the last six months, um, I would consider this a must watch 20 minutes. You want to take 20 minutes and just, just watch what we go over today because there's some things that are going to be changing you want to know about. So welcome to the new year. We do see some changes ahead of us in 2017. I'm going to talk about that. I want to make sure that you are on our mailing list. We have been updating our mailing list throughout the month of December. So if you're not on our mailing list, please contact us so we can get you on there. We have two distinctly different databases of buyers. One is for the folks that buy bank-owned property, and the other is for those that like to buy private REO property. And so we have two separate lists. Uh, we send out lists uh, multiple times every week. So if you're not on our list, um, let us know because we've been doing that throughout the month of December. Um, the early part of this year, we'll be making some changes on how we send out inventory and as well as protocol to follow. We've had a ton of activity um, the last six weeks, and so um, that has caused us to make some changes, both with bank stuff, which, by, which comes from the banks, not from us, but um, the auction houses that we work with, they do have um, their specific protocol to follow. And then there's, the, the, there's private REO providers out there. There's a number of vendors we work with. I'm going to explain some of that today and how that works and so there's some things that are going to be changes um, that you're going to want to know about um, and you're going to want to know especially with regards to the bank stuff you're really going to want to be in tune to what we see happening um, in 2017 with that now i'm going to do this in two distinctly different pieces so it's important that you sort of pay attention to what i'm talking about because i'm going to do this both in in two different uh, blocks the first part is going to be private REOs only. So what I'm going to be talking about for the next five or six slides is just going to be on the private REO stuff only. This is where our buyers found the best deals in 2016. And we see a ton of this inventory coming onto the market um, at this moment, but we expect even more of it to be coming onto the market in 2017. So it's important that if you're going to buy off those lists that you understand the protocol, it is important. We see anywhere from uh, five to 10,000 private REOs each month. We expect that to be consistent, if not grow in the coming months. Uh, we all these these lists include non-performing notes, REOs, performing notes, as well as some occupied properties. Interestingly, occupied properties early part of 2016 weren't moving at all, and there's a lot of reasons for that. But in, what we did see towards the end of 2016 was we saw a little bit of a bump in interest in tenant occupied cash flowing properties. We do get those; those are on a completely separate list, and I hardly ever ever send those out in in mass to our to our buyers network. It's it's by request. You know, maybe I'll send out an email just saying, hey, we have some properties in Detroit or we have some properties in Jacksonville or whatever that are rented out. Contact us for the list. But I almost never send those out. So those are upon request. Um, we have sold bulk packages off these lists for as little as $3,500 a door. And actually, in a few cases, a little bit less than that. But there's many on these lists that we send out that are under $10,000. And we're also now carrying a whole bunch of inventory that's in sort of that ten to to fifty thousand, fifty to sixty thousand dollar range as well. These are vacant REO type property, privately owned. They're not bank stock, but the the protocol on those are similar but different from bank property. I'm going to talk about that because it's really important that you understand how that's going to work going forward. So first of all, on private REOs, the first thing you want to do is you want to make sure you're on our list. If you're not on our list, you can go to preauctionbids at gmail.com, send us an email, let us know what markets you buy, and we cannot send these lists out in mass. They all go out per market. So if you're in um, Chicago and you want Chicago properties, we're going to send you Chicago properties. If you're in Ohio and Illinois and Indiana, we'll send you those states. We don't send these lists out in their entirety. We break them down um, multiple times a week by states. So just request the states that you want the properties in. I mean, all your due diligence, these must be done up front prior to making your offer. I'm going to walk through a step-by-step -step how that works in a minute. Um, unlike bank property on private REOs, you can usually get lockbox codes. So request those by email. 
Uh, most of these types of REOs are going to have some small liens. You always want to check. There won't be loans against the property, but there could be liens. And so we ask you to check those first before making an offer. Again, we're going to go through that step by step. Um, but the buyer is responsible for paying those liens. So you want to check for that. These lists go out three to four times each week. And some lists are smaller than others. Some lists we send out can be 1,200 properties. And other lists we'll get during the course of the week will be 10 or 6. And so if you're on our mailing list and you want to see everything that comes out as it comes out in real time, you want to let us know that because these lists will come out multiple times a week. And then again, very, very um, important reminder, be sure to read the protocol provided on each list. Some of these lists go out with no pricing. Some have a ballpark pricing. It may say under $10,000 for these 50. So make your offer somewhere in there. Um, and some will have very specific pricing. We're now doing a list for by upon request from our buying community. We're now on one list in particular. We're giving very specific pricing. It's not only specific to what the seller is asking for, but it includes our fees as well. So there's just if, that, if, if we send out a list and say that's the pricing, that's the pricing, and that's been set at that for a reason. Now understand something. We do get this, these properties in bulk. We buy them in bulk because we have a large buying community. We work with other vendors as well who have a large buying community as well. And by combining those two entities together, we're able to buy in, in bulk, which means we get better pricing. So when you see the pricing that comes out of here, if it's on a, a low-end REO, don't think that that's, that hasn't been discounted. It's been discounted anywhere from up to 50 percent so but those some of those will have very specific prices so it's important that when we send out a list that you read the protocol because it all will not be the same it will fluctuate list to list okay step-by-step -step process now this is really important when buying privately owned REOs very important if you're buying privately owned stock it's important that you watch the next couple slides step number one always re request the lockbox code to go do your inspection that's step number one you want to go look at the property you want to do your due diligence first. That includes checking for liens. Know what your all-in costs are going to be. So if, if you are looking at a property, have somebody simultaneously be checking to see what liens or encumbrances are against the property. Typically, you're going to see some old tax liens or some water liens. That's very common. So before you make your offer, understand that all up front. You can make your offer to us via email. Uh, we will submit your offer for you. We do not need a proof of funds or a letter of intent. But I will need to know how you intend to close this, and it matters. I'm going to tell you why it matters in the next few slides, but it matters that you tell us when, how you intend to close, and I'll describe that in a minute, and when you intend to close. That now matters. That's one of the big changes that's coming at us at the moment, is that your closing date is going to matter, and how you close will also matter because it directly affects the price. You've made an offer. We need to know when and how you want to close. Your reply is always within 48 hours, sometimes faster. It does not take long for us to get replies back on these. If it takes longer than that, that's on us because it shouldn't take more than a couple of days to let you know if your offer has been um, accepted or not. Once we agree on price, a contract will be generated. At this point in time, and I'm going to say this multiple times, it's really important. At this point in time, your due diligence is done. You've checked for liens. You've seen the property. You've done your due diligence. You've made your offer. Your offer's been accepted. You've gone to contract. You're going to close. There's no. This is consistent with bank property. We'll talk about that in a few slides. But your due diligence is done at that point. Once we agree on a contract, the price, the contract, or a price rather, the contract will be generated. We're always paid by the seller. There's no fees. So whatever the agreed to price is, the agreed to price is. If you're a broker, you have to add on top of that. That's consistent across the board on all private REOs. Again, if you're at this point right here where you've submitted your offer and you've got a contract coming your way, your due diligence is done. And because of that, for that reason, this is also new, very important. If you are a new buyer, if you're an established buyer with us, we're not going to ask you for earnest money. You know how the game's played. You understand it. We've closed with you previously. So this part does not apply to you. If you are a new buyer and you've not purchased we will now ask for an earnest money deposit. And here's the reason for that. And some of you already know this, but we've had too many cases this past uh, six, eight weeks in particular where people have re requested a contract. We've agreed on the price. We're going to close. And then all of a sudden the buyer disappears or the buyer changes their mind or the buyer goes to the property and says, oh, well, it's really only worth this. We're not doing, we can't do that anymore. And there's reasons for that. We're not trying to be a, a, a nuisance, but these, these properties move quickly. And when you take something off the market for a period of time under contract, we assume that it's sold. And then when you, if the buyer doesn't close, then everybody's stuck. If the, the seller's taking it off the market. Um, it, 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 it'd be the same thing if you were to make the offer, go under contract, and the seller sold it from you. Well, that, that wouldn't be fair either. So if you're under contract, you're under contract. So we will be asking for earnest money deposits for all new buyers going forward. Okay, how do, we, how do we close on these? Now, this is when I said a minute ago why that matters, that closing dates. We're now offering an option on most, 
Not all. If it's a three or $4,000 REO, folks, it's, the, the seller is probably not going to let you do a warranty deed, okay? But we've been asked a lot about warranty deeds versus quick claim trades or quick claim transactions. So this is what we're going to do. We're going to offer a warranty deed as well as quick claim on private REOs. So we're going to ask you for a closing date when you make your offer. That's going to matter because if, if you make an offer of $5,000 and the asking price was seven and you want to close by a warranty deed, that's probably not going to fly. Um, if you're closing by a, by a quick claim deed, that's going to be factored into the price. The faster you close, the more likely the seller is going to say, oh, they're going to close in five days by quick claim deed. We're willing to accept less money. I mean, if you're closing by a warranty deed, price is going to be more firm and less negotiable. It's just that simple. And I put in big, bold block letters here why that is. You, a buyer can't expect to get a rock bottom price as well as close by warranty deed. Why? Because you're taking the property off the market for a week to 10 days, even, even, even longer than that, to get your warranty deed back. Nobody's going to sell you a low-end REO at $4,000 and then wait three weeks to close. Now, why is that? If you've been around for the last six weeks, you should know the answer to that. We've had multiple large tapes that have been purchased in bulk. So we have a large, a large block of REOs. We're selling them at $3,500, $4,500 a door. Um, you're making your offers. People are closing on something. But then all of a sudden, somebody walks in and buys the whole thing. The sellers recognize that happens very, very frequently. That happens. And so why would they take properties off the market for three or four weeks for you to close on a warranty deed and then give you a, a great price at the same time? So if you're going to want a warranty deed, that's no problem. We're going to allow warranty. We're going to let you go get a warranty deed on some of these. We're going to be providing you with a title company that you can use in all transactions. You'll be able to talk to them about how it works. Um, we're going to be able to provide that to you. If you want a warranty deed, that's fine. But remember, the price is going to be much more firm if it's warranty deed. And you're going to have to wait two, three weeks to close than if you're closing on a quick claim. So the moral of the story is if you're going to want that really low price, 35 if you, when you see those advertisements, you can buy these for 3500 or 4500 or five. When you see that, you're probably not going to get a warranty deed. Because the seller is not going to wait two, three weeks to close on something like that, those kinds of prices. They're going to, if they're going to dump the asset at that, at that sort of a number, they're going to want to close quickly. A couple of notes on private REOs. We're going to start requesting lockbox codes from various um, buyers, buyers rather, once a day, all compiled on one spreadsheet. We have been bombarded with requests for lockbox codes. I mean, to the point where it's confusing for us, it's confusing for our vendors providing those lockbox codes to us. We have requested from them to have all the lockbox codes up front so there's no delays. But we're asking you to submit your lockbox codes on one spreadsheet each day. Um, it's not necessary, and email's fine too. You can just put everything in an email, but but try to like when you get up in the morning, you have lockbox requests. Try to hold those till the end of the day and request those towards the end of the day, or just submit them once in the morning from the previous day, and we'll get those for you. We usually get them pretty quick. Usually, it can be anywhere from an hour to a day to get your lockbox codes, so they're pretty quick. But we don't want. It. We've got so many emails flying around on lockbox codes, we're all sort of sort of confused. So one email a day will be requesting lockbox codes. Very important. All lists will now go out with a specific name on them, and it'll be listed on the protocol. When you make your offer or request, please put the name on the list. Uh, Matt does keep a database, and he's pretty good at tracking it, but I'm not so good at tracking it. So if you're making an offer on something and I can't find the list and I can't look it up, i got to go look through 10 different lists to find it. It makes it really cumbersome. It just takes time. So please, when you, when you make your offer, we're going to give you a name or a code to that particular list. We're going to ask you to reference that particular list. Okay, now... Shifting gears, moving away from private REO stock. We're now going to talk about changes coming on bank-owned foreclosed properties. Lots of uncertainty right now and lots of conversation about what's going to happen in 2017. Freddie and Fannie certainly is at the top of that list. Many as you may know, Freddie and Fannie is a government agency. They've, they underwrite about 95 or 96% of all loans in America, 30-year fixed loans. Um, there could be some changes coming to them. It can have ramifications and a ripple effect throughout the market. Um, we know the banks are sitting on a plethora of shadow inventory. We know that. And we know the government regulations prevented that banks from foreclosing as, as easily as they once could. Um, we think those things are going to change. Um, how many homes are currently in pre-foreclosure status? Could they be coming out of the market fairly soon? These are all questions that people are asking right now. Um, we all know that when you're buying off a bank, this should be review for most people that are buying bank inventory. But if you're buying off a bank list, you know that the bank price, the reserve price, the indicative bid, the target price, whatever you want to call it, is set by the bank. Is that going to change? We're going to talk a little bit about what we've learned from our bank sources over the last 45 days, in particular with regards to that question. And we believe it to be the case. Three or four of our bank vendors have told us that the reserves or indicative bids are going to start to get a little bit softer. Hudson Marshall, we're already sending out lists now where the target bid price is less, 
excuse me, the acceptable bid price is less than the target bid. You have to read the protocol. I get, I'm getting one of those lists now about every two weeks where it says, here's the target bid, but we'll consider this. We'll consider eight, ten, twelve thousand dollars less than that. You want to read that protocol. They still stay, stay stay committed to that low number, but the target bid's now coming down. Um, Realty bids already told told us that there's going to be some changes, especially with regards to low end inventory. If you like that low end five to twenty thousand dollar REO, be looking at the Realty bid list because we know those are going to start coming a little bit lower. Now. There's one anomaly to this. This is auction.com. I put it in big, bold capitals here. They will not accept offer the, under the reserve price. If you send it under the reserve price, we're just not going to submit the bid. It's just a waste of our time. It's a waste of their time. We've been told by our rep there multiple times. They're the one auction house right now that their reserve price is set. Now, are there ways to get discounts? There are. Too long to talk about here. Contact us. We can talk about that. But if you see an auction.com uh, list and we give you a reserve price that is the price it's you cannot under if you offer under that reserve price we're not going to submit the bid because they won't even listen to it we are expecting to see some large lists of hud properties it's a great reason for no other reason if you're not consistently buying off these bank lists from us that's fine if you're still on our list though that's a good thing because you're going to start seeing that change especially when it comes to more inventory at lesser prices we've been told we're going to see a flood of hud properties come on the market in the next 60 days if you're not on our bank list we can't send those to you what are we going to expect in the coming coming months on bank properties? This is what we see what's going to happen. You're going to see more inventory. You're going to see some banks begin to decrease their, their, their asking prices. That's going to come down. When prices go down, competition is going to increase. You need to be prepared to act. I can't stress that enough. We've seen. I hate to say this, but we have sort of seen the Trump bump. Um, we, we've seen it. We've seen a 20 to 25% increase in activity over the last six weeks. When you start talking about less taxes and, and, and less regulations, investors come out of the woodwork. If you're an investor, we believe it's going to be an exciting year, but you need to be prepared to act. That includes just being on our list and being aware of the protocol. And what I mean by that is not wasting your time doing things that are just wasting your time will help you be successful. That's why we do these videos. Um, we won't. We do not accept, expect there to be an immediate fire sale. But we do see there being a gradual shift before more investor-friendly pricing is that we believe as the months go on in 2017, you're going to see more and more deals come on the market. Expect to see three to five new lists come out, come out of this office each week. If that's too much for you, tell us. We, this is all auto. We have one employee, and all they do is they take the lists as they come out. I write the protocol. It, it goes to, to the, this individual, and he splits them up by markets and sends them out. And it can be three, four, five lists, even more on a weekly basis. If, they, if I'm filling up your inbox too much and we're just boring you, let us know. We'll take you off. We'll cut that back. Last thing to expect in 2017 is the unexpected. There's going to be an interesting year, and there's going to be changes that's going to happen throughout the year. We believe it's going to be fluid. Um, and there'll be some exciting things that are going to be happening for you as a real estate investor. Just some reminders. Now, again, if you're a, if you're a bank buyer, this is just this is nothing more than review. But I'm going to go through it anyway. Do not bid until you've done your due diligence. Just like on private inventory, do not bid on an REO unless you've done your due diligence. It's totally different if you're buying a tenant occupied property. On tenant occupied property, you can submit your bid, do your due diligence, get 10 days contingency period. You can do all that on OC. But when you're buying REOs, your due diligence is done first, then submit your bid. We need all of your buyer's information when submitting a bid. If you submit a bid, we don't have all that. We can't submit the bid. Bid response time from a bank is not 48 hours like on private stock. It's 1 to 14 days. Be patient. Um, signed agreements and EMD is expected within 48 hours. It's all very, very fast. Um, we cannot get you lockbox codes on most bank-owned property. So if you ask for a lock, if, I, if you, we can get you a lockbox code, it's in the protocol. Hudson Marshall usually can get us lockbox codes to the vacant ones but on most of the other ones you can't get lockbox codes if you're a broker and you do not explain all the above to your buyer we'll take you off our list we've had too many people this year that gave out our bank list to a buyer they didn't know the protocol they made offers and got them and us in trouble fortunately we did not lose any of our bank contacts but it can happen and so if you if you're a broker and you're distributing our bank lists out, and you don't explain what we just went through to your buyer, we're going to take you off our list. If somebody wants me to produce a YouTube video like this just for you, without my contact information on there for your buyers, I'm glad to do that. It's important that your buyers are trained and they understand the protocol. If you don't do that, you'll be dropped from the list. Our fees are always the same on bank property, uh, $2,000 for, uh, for anything under $100,000, 2% for anything over that. Brokers always add on top of that. Um, always submit your highest and best bid. Um, it's, I, we say that all the time, but I can't stress it enough. Your highest and best bid should come in when you make your initial bid. 
Um, as I said, any bid under the price that we give you will typically be rejected or not even re replied to. Um, our most successful buyers are the ones that take the time to learn the protocol. By not wasting your time, you'll have a greater level of success. And be patient. Sometimes it can take you two, three, four bids to win a property from a bank. It's not uncommon. So don't get discouraged if you bid on one property and don't get it, or three properties, or five, or whatever. You've got to be aggressive with this stuff. There's a lot of competition for this type of inventory out there right now, so you have to be patient. That was it. I did that in 20 minutes and two seconds, so I'm right on time. So um, what, we need, what we need to know that's important if you want to continue to see the lists, um, we're asking that you contact us and tell us a few things. First, do you want to buy both bank-owned, or excuse me, do you want both bank and private REO, and what are your markets? Now, we separate those out into two different lists. They'll never come in the same list. We'll give you bank property one day, and we'll give you private stock the, other, the next day. But we need to know what markets and whether you want, whether you want to see one or both lists. Um, you can email that to matt at preauctionbids at gmail.com or my email address is charlie.castro at sbcglobal.net. I'm going to leave those up there for just another second so you can write those down, preauctionbids at gmail.com um, or um, charlie.castro at sbcglobal.net. There's Matt's personal address as well. So you've got our email addresses there. Just email you or me, email us rather. Let us know what list you'd like to see and what markets you'd like to buy in. So that is our YouTube video for this week. Have a happy new year, everybody. It's going to be an exciting 2017. We really look forward to working with you. And as always, if you got questions, please give us a call.